Hey guys, Leveled Up DC TV Show here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about The Fly Season 8 Episode 14 titled Funeral for a Friend. Of course, this will be my review for Ben's channel. So if you guys go on to enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And right off the bat, just giving you guys my quick initial thoughts on the episode. I was not a fan of this episode. I really did not like it. I get what they were trying to do with this episode as it was an episode essentially to honor and pay tribute to Frost, who of course was part of the Team Flash family for years now. And yes, although we did have some bits which I really liked, we had a couple of bittersweet moments such as Team Flash going around and doing what they could do to honor Frost, I did really like that. I did also like the editing choice they went for with this episode where they essentially split up the episode in different sections and showed how essentially how everyone is coping with the death of Frost, like we get the point of view of each character so I did really like that. And of course, the two cliffhangers we had were really, really interesting, especially the one with Caitlyn. It was insane and we definitely need to talk about it and theorize about what's going to happen. Now, fair enough if some of you guys liked this episode, of course, it is your own opinion. But I really did not like certain choices they went for during this episode. Surprise, surprise, Chester and Allegra made the hit list once again for the con section. Their whole argument on freaking hummus was pointless. Why are we getting something like this? I don't understand. Why are we getting scenes like this? You have a friend who died, everyone is upset, and we have these two over here arguing whether or not hummus is a dip or a condiment. Are you actually serious? This stuff did not need to be in this episode at all. Once again, slowed things down, could have made for a little extra other scene squeezed in, but instead we have these two arguing about something so small like this in the episode. I honestly couldn't believe it. I thought the scene they had last week was awful, but damn, I think we just topped last week's scene with this stupid argument they had in this episode. There were other things I really did not like about this episode as well, such as certain choices they went for with Iris during the episode, which I will talk more in detail about during this breakdown. And um, I did not like how they handled a couple of Team Flash stuff once again. And I, as I said, I will go and talk more about that during the breakdown as well. But of course, for those who haven't seen the episode, then spoiler alert, because this is a review and breakdown after all. So I'll be going over some major spoilers, which you certainly wouldn't want to hear from me, especially when we talk about the ending. So for those who haven't seen the episode, go watch the episode and come back later for this breakdown. But for those who are staying, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you are aware of more Arrowverse content coming your way. Okay, so this episode kicks off with us seeing how different Team Flash members are coping with the death of Frost. We do see how her death has impacted their lives as they're trying to just continue their lives as normal. I must say, the way this opening scene was shot was actually really, really nice, especially during the Iris bit of the intro. I did really like the cinematography over there. But yeah, we do still see Barry staring at the hospital bed Frost died in. But yeah, we do have Barry getting an alert at the Cortex and this is when we see some metahuman robber robbing a bank and he heads straight into the action. We do have the Flash arriving with Allegra and Cecile. Um, yeah, this metahuman is essentially like a cyborg that has like emotive powers, like his powers are based on his emotions, something along those lines. But yeah, we do see how Team Flash is distracted during this scene. We do have the metahuman causing a building to pretty much fall apart. And then we of course have the Flash rushing to save everyone in harm's way, leaving Allegra and Cecile to face off against this meta. And yeah, due to Chester accidentally mentioning Frost, Allegra shoots a car and Cecile's powers are pretty much overwhelmed by other emotions and the meta just gets away. I did not like this scene and mostly for just two reasons. Firstly, why on earth is Cecile out there in the field? Someone with no field experience at all is dealing with metahumans. She is going around trying to face off against the metahuman. It makes no sense and I find it stupid. I didn't mind Allegra being there too much because she's been in the field before and at least has some experience. But Cecile has none. Why is she there? 
And once again, like in terms of Allegra, I do understand why she was there. Of course, she has experience. But also, when Barry ran to save the people from the collapsing building, if no one was there, the villain would have just easily escaped. So someone needed to be there. And I get that. So I did not mind Allegra being there at all. But Cecile shouldn't have been there. That was an issue I had with this scene. Now, you could count this as like a second thing that I did not like, but I will let this one slide although it did bother me. And that was when uh, we had Allegra accidentally shoot the car instead of the metahuman. I get she was grieving, which is why she messed up so badly. I do understand that. So I, although I did not like what happened there, I will let it slide because there is a reason behind it. But yeah, we do have Team Flash doing a meeting in the lounge and they're talking about what they're going to do, especially with the death of Frost, serving as enough of a distraction to a point where Team Flash cannot focus properly. We saw how badly Allegra messed up at the start. We saw how badly Chester messed up at the start. And of course, how out of focus Cecile was as well. So Team Flash are getting distracted. And we do have Joe suggesting that they could do things to honor Frost individually, like he does mention his like watercolor sessions or something like that and then um, this does give team flash like the idea to do things to honor frost we do have caitlin getting bothered with the fact that she wasn't aware of such meeting and of course that was because barry wanted to give her some time because of course her sister just died and we do have caitlin also mentioning that she doesn't want to be there for frost's funeral as well of course caitlin did feel out of character in this episode but she was grieving, her sister literally died, so it does make sense that she was like this. And yeah, I did kind of like what they did with Caitlyn in this episode as well, because it does make sense. So firstly, in terms of like the point of view characters, we have Iris's point of view first. And over here, she is with Cecile, and she does mention that she wants to make an obituary for the citizen, for Frost. Now, although I did enjoy the scenes with Iris in this episode, especially with like the journalism stuff and all of that, Iris being around does not make sense. She has a time sickness. This is a sickness that's literally unpredictable and can literally pop up any second. Not just that, but she is now aware that not only does she phase in and out of time, but also her sickness has reached a point where she could literally touch someone and send them to the still force. And she's walking around like everything is fine. And um, that just does not make any sense to me. She is literally going around knowing she is sick and can harm others around her. So logically, I didn't like what they did with Iris in this episode. But again, the scenes she had during the episode were really nice at the same time. But it was bothering because when you bring logic into it, it doesn't make sense that Iris is doing whatever she did in this episode. But yeah, Iris does essentially get someone else to write this obituary in which Caitlin's mother felt that there was something off because it felt like someone who didn't know Frost wrote this. And she does also ask Iris why she wasn't the one that wrote it, in which of course, from if it was from her point of view, she would risk exposing herself being associated with Team Flash, but also she wasn't too close with her anyways. But yeah, we do get this really, really nice scene during this episode, and it's with Iris. It's probably my favorite in the episode, and that was on Iris's podcast where we have people talking about their encounter with Frost and how she pretty much changed their lives, how she saved all these people. And that was a really sweet scene, and I did really like it. But yeah, hand down the worst storyline of the episode and that is the absolutely stupid debate between Chester and Allegra on whether hummus is a dip or a condiment. I really don't understand why we got something like this. It was absolutely stupid and I was just shocked that we actually got something like this. Their friend died. We see how everyone is coping with Frost's death and we have these two just creating some unnecessary drama of their own on literally the smallest thing ever. I couldn't believe we had something like this in the episode. They could have easily cut it out and it did not need to be there at all. Of course, during those scenes as well, Chester does have this idea to essentially make like a display of Frost's suit, kind of like what Barry did with Oliver's suit at the Hall of Justice. So Chester does essentially get that idea as well. But yeah, after their great debate is over, we do have them paying a visit to Chilblain to see how he's doing. And then of course, Chilblain's not doing too good. And that is when we have Chester and Allegra taking him back to Star Labs. 
But yeah, Chester and Allegra essentially honor Frost through the jacket she wore during season 4 that made her feel like a hero for the first time and they of course put that up on display and I thought that was a really nice way to of course honor Frost as well. But yeah, we do then head over to Barry's point of view and this scene was quite sweet. Well, we had a couple of scenes with Barry but they were enjoyable. We have him building a snowman on top of Mount Everest and of course as he's doing all of this he's crossing off everything Frost checklisted for him and then we have Barry making this ice sculpture of like Frost's emblem I believe and I thought that was really cool as well and we do have him putting up her painting at the Louvre I really like those and I really loved Barry in the CCPD hot dog competition as well of course due to speedster science he's able to just absolutely destroy the other officer as well but this was an enjoyable scene and I did really like it. We do then have Caitlyn's point of view during the episode and you just feel bad for Caitlyn man like she has literally lost everything that she loves at this point and yeah Caitlyn is certainly not doing good she has all these photos of frost around her house she smells her shirt and she pretty much has all of Frost's memory in that one house so yeah she is definitely broken and she's of course living in that house as well so she's definitely not doing great but yeah, we do have Barry coming in and he is trying to get Caitlyn to go to Frost's funeral but Caitlyn does not want to go they do have this little argument and Caitlyn does ask Barry to leave but then we do have Barry talking to Caitlyn about what Frost would have wanted Caitlyn to do and that's when Caitlyn starts to open up more. Of course Caitlyn does get some flashback about a promise she made to Frost as well and that is what essentially gets her to go. So we do then have Frost's funeral where after the pep talk Barry gave, Caitlyn does eventually show up and gives the speech to everyone there and after that we do have team flash at the house and they're talking about these different memories with frost and then we have the metahuman showing up again in which we have barry defeating the villain off screen which i wish we saw it like they could have easily cut off once again that stupid debate between chester and allegra and they could have just added in that scene with the flash capturing this meta instead of it um, it could have just been a quick scene, it could have just been Barry running up, tying him up and just defeating him. We didn't really need to like see like a full on proper fight, just seeing the Flash just capturing the meta would have been enough. Um, they could have easily squeezed that in instead of the debate we had with Chester and Allegra, but yeah, it is what it is I guess. But yeah, the ending of this episode was really really interesting. We had two different cliffhangers and they were both sick. Firstly, in terms of Caitlyn, we have Caitlyn calling someone on the phone, which of course we find out to be Chillblain, and we then head to her house, and it's somehow decorated into a lab so quickly, but yeah, we'll let that slide. But she has these like different test tubes going on, she has all these samples going on, and she does also have a sample of Frost's hair. And yeah, Caitlyn is trying to essentially recreate Frost and bring her back to life. I am really, really interested to see what is going on over here. I'm going to assume that it will not work out because they're not going to go through these past two episodes to bring Frost back. So either something's going to, something wrong is going to happen or it's just not going to work. So either Caitlyn and Frost will become one entity again, but maybe this new Frost which they create becomes a full on villain or even if they do not become one entity again, if they're still separate entities, maybe this Frost which Caitlyn creates will end up being a villain, like a full-on villain this time. And that will pretty much end up being like a repercussion to what Caitlyn did. And of course, it's not going to end very well. Or pretty much, Caitlyn is just going to become a villain at this point where she's just so obsessed with bringing Frost back and then she's just going to like inject herself with whatever she's creating over here and then she's going to become a villain like that. Like maybe it's going to be like Caitlyn Frost once again, but this time she will stay a villain for good. Maybe that's what's going to happen. I don't know, but it is very, very interesting. But yeah, lastly, we do have Iris's time sickness kicking in and we have Iris just full on disappearing. Now it must be mentioned that Iris will not be in any episode of The Flash until episode 19. So she will not be there for 15, 16, 17 and 18. So yeah, this is essentially the episodes where Candace Patton took a hiatus and this time sickness disappearance is pretty much just an excuse for Candace to take that hiatus. So that is why they're doing it. But I yeah, do not expect to see Iris for a while now because yeah, she has disappeared somewhere and of course 
Team Flash, or well, more specifically, Barry and Nora will be going into the Still Force to investigate what is going on. And I'm really looking forward to that episode as well. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys have enjoyed the video, please give a like and subscribe. Be sure to tell me in the comment section down below if you guys enjoyed the episode. I'm interested to see all of your thoughts towards all of this as well. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. I see red.